All right, today we are going to be talking about reflection and review. So whichever way feels more comfortable for you to talk about it, we are going to be talking about how at the end of a season in your business or at the end of any holiday in your business, you should be writing and recording uh, things that went well and things that fell flat and went real bad so that you can use that in your next planning process. Remember, plan, then do, then review, repeat, and the process will get easier and easier. Thanks so much for joining me today on The Small Business Hustle. Welcome, welcome to The Small Business Hustle. And hello, hello, I'm Molly B, your host and owner of MJ's Market, a small general store in South Dakota. This is a weekly podcast where we discuss operating a small business. All right, so today's quote is a tough one. All right, bear with me. Without reflection, we go blindly on our way creating more unintended consequences, and failing to achieve anything useful. Woo! That hurt. That stung. That was Mar- Margaret J. Wheatley. woof All right, so she says, Without reflection, we go blindly on our way, creating more unintended consequences and failing to achieve anything useful. What I read in that quote is... You really should spend some time on reviewing and reflecting so that you can move forward in a much more intelligent way. Uh, Take the blinders off and let's really be soberly looking at our business and seeing the places where we can improve and excel. Okay, so let's jump into this. At the end of any season in my business or any holiday, um, I spend time writing notes, and I think you should too, and here's why. Uh, When I sit down and I write myself some notes right after the season has occurred, it gives me a chance to really summarize what happened in that time period and what went good, what went bad, and then what happens is when I'm planning for that holiday um, or that season, which usually, I mean, it's in the future. It's not like a year in advance because obviously I'm doing planning well before the holiday occurs again. Uh, but it's, it's I can read that and kind of get a good summary away from when I initially thought it. And, and it still continues to help me to really see my perspective in that time. And then I can kind of think about it wholly in, in, its, in all of it with clarity. And I'm able to make a better plan to attack that season or holiday in the future. So it just continues to make me better. Uh, The other thing I do is I require this of key employees and or leaders. Uh, So you don't have to have everybody in your business do this, but um, I definitely think there's some key people that you should have doing this process. So for us, uh, the most recent holiday that we are doing a review on is Valentine's Day. Uh, Let's think of like, okay, another business, an accountant, for example. I would say like every month around tax season is a holiday in and of itself. So I would do one for January. I would do one for February. I would do one for March. Um, Maybe for like a restaurant or a bar or any other kind of a service like that. If you have any large holiday event, you definitely should be taking notes on that. Uh, if it if it's a holiday, um, so I'm just you know in the mindset of spring. So we have Easter coming, um, we have Memorial Day coming. Those are all a fixed day, so we know Memorial Day is on a Monday. That's that, okay? We know that Easter is always on a Sunday. That is set. Uh, but how do shifts in a holiday like Valentine's Day affect your sales? If it falls on a weekend, is it different than if it falls during the week? And I can say absolutely, positively, yes. Now, whether it's better for your business or worse for your business depends on your business. If you have a restaurant, your business is likely going to be even higher on a weekend versus if the holiday falls during the week, okay? Uh, it might spread it out and prolong it more. I'm not an expert in the restaurant business. I am a lot more knowledgeable about retail sales, and I can tell you that 
we're going to do way better if that holiday is in the middle of the week because of the way that people's work patterns and habits go. It's going to affect how our sales are. So I'm going to take that into play when I am planning a holiday. Okay, so uh, what are the kind of things that you want to write in these notes? So this is really important that you you really spend some time thinking about this. If you're not really into writing yourself notes, record yourself some notes so that you can listen to it in the future. So uh, what you want to write down things like what marketing strategies did well. Uh, you want to be really specific about sell-through and the types of things like looking at the things and deciding why did this sell through better than others. Um, going back to, you know, a restaurant, well, what food items sold better than others? Um, you know, again, uh, when we're talking about an accountant, um, where were the the ups and downs and like the holdups in our process? Was there something we could have done that would have made us more efficient? Um, How were we doing at staying on top of clients? How were we at following up with people? If the season was a bananas blur and you didn't even have a thought to stay on top of your clients, maybe there's something you can do in the future that will make that process go better for you. Because if you get the information from your clients at the time that's convenient for you, I would imagine that the whole season will go better for you. So those are some things that I kind of think about uh, when I'm writing those notes is is all of the the pieces from a whole. Uh, If your business is highly dependent on having um, a lot of um, labor and a lot of employees in place at certain times, how did that go well or how did it not go well? Sometimes you'll find that um, employees' attendance at work can drop off around a holiday. So is there something you can do to help improve that? Uh, Perhaps they're better at coming to work because they get better tips around that time. Um, But it could be the other case is that they really want to go be a part of the event. So is there some sort of a bonus that you can structure that ensures they come to their shifts but then plan their activities um, when they have time off? So those are kind of some things. Uh, that that I would um, think about when I'm writing this. And then now, how can I step that piece up a notch? So in that moment, I think, well, it would have been better had this occurred. Um, or we thought we had a good plan, but we were throwing a curveball. And so how can we curveball proof this process next year? Obviously, we can't be prepared to know when and how that curveball is going to hit. But if we can kind of just think about it, that in itself can be more preparation than we had done in the past. Uh, Okay, so the people that I make write this is um, any kind of key players and especially key customer service people um, who should write uh, these as well and um, best if they can write them through the season. So if it's a longer period of time, having them write either, um, I mean, a daily summary gets a little bit redundant, but uh, a weekly summary for sure. Uh, That would be something that I would say would apply to, uh, say, Christmas in retail or um, an accountant um, who has a tax season, somebody who's fielding those phone calls from customers. Um, What is the customer uh, questions that are getting asked the most? Maybe you even want to do a tally of these questions. So you're going to start writing the question down the first time it gets asked, and then you throw a tally mark behind it. Because if, if all of your customers are asking the same question, What can you do to ensure that that's not a significant question in the future? Um, Maybe that means putting together an infographic and sending it out to your customers or a timeline. Um, So these are all kind of things that I like to think about. And that's why that key customer service person is so important. Uh, You really need that customer service person who is fielding those questions and who is getting all of that information. Like they are maybe one of the most important people to be writing this feedback for you. So that then it can come into your plan um, in the future when you're when you're figuring out how that should go. Okay, so um, my uh, current employee who I have write this, um, she has trouble being critical of me and really straightforward when I am the problem. Uh, But I still have her write uh, the perspective. Um, FYI, most of the problems are because of me. (laughs) Okay, but uh, in my defense, it's it's partly because I am trying to do too many things. And uh, so so it, it gets to be a little messy. So she still writes perspective that I think is really valuable. She'll tell me more about what customers are saying that I may have missed. 
and filling in that time when I'm not able to get feedback and comments from customers. So then I'm able to take um, her picture and my picture and put them together and see a much more cohesive and um, complete picture. Uh, Okay, so um, I also like to be really specific about what went well and what went kind of flat. Uh, If something didn't either produce the way I thought it was or it was cumbersome, I like to be really specific about what that was because when I'm planning in the future, the more specific I am about what didn't go well, the more I can solve that problem, the more I can give to other people to help give me ideas on how to solve that problem. Okay, so I also try to back um, all of my notes with data. So I try to prepare holiday-specific sales data. So what that means is I actually, um, I'll download for the season. So, you know, um, a holiday that falls, let's say we're going to give Easter uh, say it falls at the beginning of April. So I don't want to just look at March's sales independently and April's sales independently. I want to want to look at the weeks leading up to Easter and and to Easter. So I'm going to run a special sales uh, report of that time period and then label it Easter. I might I might want to look at just March's sales in the future, but I don't want to just look at March's sales when I'm talking about a holiday that falls a week or two into um, the next month. I want to make sure that I am able to look at that holistically in that holiday. Um, I like to write down things about when was I busy and when was I slow. That might make an impact on how I decide to do certain tasks. Maybe we schedule our day differently um, and maybe we we structure how we do things differently. Maybe instead of certain maintenance tasks, uh, we shift those to the evening because we're going to be busier in the morning. So we do more prep work in the morning. Whatever that looks like, I like to really be specific about that. And then also what sold early and what sold later. So if something sold through right away, um, especially with like a holiday or seasonal item, generally we can't get that item again. We can't, um, we don't, we don't have a way to reorder that. And so I want to write if it sold right away and early, I want to make sure I order more of that next year because it maybe didn't even make it into the prime selling period. So I want to give it a better chance next year. Um, also, if we had, so one of the challenges of of being in a small town is that uh, we can be a full service supply for a big event that might not repeat next year um, in the same way. So like the event might repeat, but maybe the way that they um, have the event. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say we are doing um, a parade activity and the this year the theme is about Christmas, but maybe next year it's going to be um, about, you know, summer vacations and they're going to want, um, you know, something that goes along with um, you know, Hawaii theme or something. So, so yes, I may have sold these things, but I want to notate that the reason why I sold these specific items was because it was kind of a special theme or event or something of that nature that may not see the same result next year. Uh, also, if there was a different business that had a significant disruption in their business and made me have some unusual data, I just want to make a note about that. Um, And then I'll make the decision when I'm doing the planning on whether I think that the risk of repeating, you know, the risk and reward on that, um, maybe it's repurchasing something um, and buying more of it than I thought I would need. You know, am I going to get stuck with that merchandise in the future? Is that a big deal? You know, those are kind of some things that I can um, I can play with. So. Um, Okay, and then the other things I like to write down is, you know, what comments and feedback did you receive? Um, Did you get a lot of positivity? Did you get any negativity? Because you want to fix the negativity as fast as you can. But the positive feedback, you might want to shift into your marketing advertising for the next year. You know, if somebody says, you made this as easy as the ABCs, you want that in your marketing message. Like, straight from the customer's mouth, the person who's been through it said, this was the solution and I solved it for them. So this is why it's so important that you write this down because now all of a sudden 
you may have been marketing this way, but you get this feedback and you go, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that this was solving the type of problem that it is. And and it was an oversight on my part. Here I'm making it even easier than I thought. And that is the way I should be marketing it. Um, okay, so uh, what are some examples of how this has helped in my business or how has this helped in um, things that I've, I've done? Uh, so one of the examples is um, I have a lot of background working at a retail pharmacy. And so flu shot season is a real thing. <laughs> if there is anybody out there working in any kind of a pharmacy uh, field, you know flu shot season is a real thing. And uh, and it can have different um, different time frames that really hit than others, uh, depending on the advice from doctors in your local area. So we would always, uh, you know, I I specifically would make notes and then prep my team, um, you know, about what changes we were going to make. How are we going to organize this? And then even still, I would do a mock walkthrough. Um, I remember the flu shot specifically being really crazy in terms of how do we manage the people because um, first they would come up and they would they would inquire about it. We would have to collect some information and then they would have to sign a form and then they would have to go back and get the shot. So there was really three touch points. And so how were we going to organize these three touch points? And and even still from the three touch points, it's almost like then you have people milling um, oddly in the, the waiting room. And so how can we streamline that in a way that makes sense to them and to us? And so those were the types of planning that we did in that situation where, I mean, yes, there was a product, um, but it was much more of a service that we were providing there. Uh, the other thing that I would do is is um, on the retail side of my um, my business when I worked in that retail pharmacy, um, they they would we would get uh, a truck, you know, a, a weekly truck. And I said, uh, if you are figuring out what's on the truck as it comes down the belt, you have done yourself a huge disservice. So you need to be preparing for this. Um, before the truck even gets there. So we would spend time, we would look at the um, the form and see what is coming in. And then we would make a plan on how we would keep it really organized. And we would discuss it in advance. And then at the end, if um, we would talk about it and we would say, okay, this did not go well today. Like we did not do X, Y, or Z right. And when we did that, we got better and we got better and we got better. And so I would always say, Every time you touch a box, you're making that product more expensive and you're working harder. So you want to figure out how you can touch that box the least amount of times. And so a lot of times what we would do is we would take products that we knew, um, like I'll I'll give a a quick example here. Um, We would get supplies in for our um, from our warehouse, things that we just needed in the everyday use of the business. So a lot of times when I first would would work with a team and come into a store, they would always set those to the side and and get to it later. And so I always said, man, you've got room for it immediately where it goes. Like there is literally room for these things to just be put away immediately. So why not just get that all out of the way immediately? And these things that are going to take longer, then you can spend a little bit more time and concentration. But what a weight lifted off that you've already made this progress. It's almost like it gets that ball rolling faster and you feel so much more accomplished once you're like, man, I already knocked out a cart. Like, yeah, it was really easy to just stick these on the shelf where they go. But we we didn't have to go and stack them in a pile. Um, so we touched them when we stacked them in this pile. And then we usually had to walk around them several times, which meant that they were just kind of like in our way and made it more cluttered. So we had to touch them all of those times, walk around them. And then now we have to touch them again to put them on the cart again. And then we have to touch them again to go put them on the shelf um, where they're going to get stored. And then from there, obviously, we're going to have to, you know, use the products. So we'll be touching them again. So it's like, well, can we skip that step? We'll put it on the cart and then we'll go straight to the shelf with it. Now, yes, that might mean we don't have enough carts so that something else will get touched twice. But so we would always balance that and we would have that conversation and then we would review at the end of the truck. And when we got the truck done faster, we would decide this was what made the difference or that was what made the difference. And then we would put that into our plan again. So something that simple 
that, you know, when I would go into a store, it would be their make or break. They'd spend days working on a warehouse truck um, and then everything else fell behind because the product was not getting put out. And so it's like, well, if we can fix this one thing, how can this propel everything else forward? If you get this truck done in a timely fashion, now all of a sudden you have time to actually do these things that you need to do and get the store back on track. So this is actually what's holding you back is the lack of planning and getting this product put up and the fact that you stack 12 different things together and then have to resort them later. Why not sort them right when they come off the truck and be done with it and then call that done? Uh, so those are examples of how that reflection and review, um, you know, there were times when I sat back at the end of unloading a truck with some uh, newer employees who, you know, I had not gotten an, um, on a plan or gotten to do anything. And it was like horrifying. Like this went so bad. I am going to go take a minute. I'm going to gather myself, my thoughts. I'm not going to freak out at anybody because that's not going to solve any problems. I'm not going to be an effective leader in that situation. But I am going to sit down and I'm going to reflect on this for a few minutes so that I cannot have this ever happen in my life again. <laughs> like, I don't want this. And and so I took that. And again, that was in a corporate environment, um, you know, but that was a learning that I had taken into running my own business in holding myself accountable in having those good good processes that really help you to um, make that next step and to make that next um, movement forward. And so um, I hope that some of this feedback has helped you. Um, I think one of the the most um, fun ways you can apply this is if you think about your holiday in general and like, I'm always stressed about this or that, you know, well, I used to make a rule um, in my life, if Christmas wasn't ready um, by the day before Thanksgiving, in terms of having gifts purchased and wrapped and the tree up and decorated, then it was not going to happen. <laughs> that was the way that my life worked in that um, setting is that I just had to do that. And once I reflected on it, I realized that was how I had to make it happen. If I didn't have it done by then, I just was going to have a miserable season. And so that was my my timeline. And And granted, it seems early to a lot of people. But it made my life so much easier and I flowed through that holiday so much better that it was worth it for me. So I hope that you can take this and apply this somewhere, either in your personal life or in your business, and, and figure out a way that you can really um, take this review, this reflection, and then um, get it to snowball into that planning piece so that you'll spend less time doing and you can spend more time um, doing the things that mean more to you and that make you happier in life. All right, guys. That is all I have about review and reflection. And upon review, I would really love your review in any podcast player that you're using. Um, I would love all the stars. I think stars are amazing. So all the stars will make me happy. And go ahead and march out there, spread some positivity. And I hope that you have a fantastic week. Thank you for joining me this week on the Small Business Hustle. I would love to hear your feedback so I can better serve you. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week where we'll continue to talk about small business. If you found value in this podcast, you can show your support by sharing our podcast with your audience and your friends. We appreciate you and please spread some positivity today. I promise it will do you wonders. Ha <laughs> ha